Okay, so when I recorded this movie, uh, this class originally, um, it the vid the audio is messed up. So I apologize for um, bad audio for part of the um, class. Uh, I'm going to record over the parts where it didn't record any audio at all. So uh, just to start with, remember the sequential logic that we've already talked about, the SR latch. Sequential logic means that it's going to remember what's on the output until you, put, until you change it with the inputs. So that's what sequential logic means. Um, <clears throat> we've seen that. And then, sorry, I got to keep up. Synchronous logic is where, you, where it remembers what's on the output until not only you change the input, but you also tell it. Uh, on a clock strike in order to change the input. I'm sorry, let me start, try that again. So you have something on the inputs, S and R. Q remains the same until you put a signal in on the clock. Then it will change Q according to what S and R is. What S and R is. So the syn synchronous logic or the synchronous latch is called the flip-flop. And so now the output Q, and not Q, it's just the output of Q. The output Q is dependent on what the output Q was before we put information in on SR and it's dependent on what's on SR, but Q will, cannot change until uh, we have a signal in on the clock input. So we want to talk about a clock strike. Um, oh, and, and again, this is called a flip-flop. Flip-flops are no longer um, the shoes you wear to the beach in the summer. Um, this, this is a flip-flop, and um, we, in order to understand a clock strike, let's just think about what a, what a clock does. And I, I mean literally a tick of a clock, right? A clock. Let's say that a, a typical clock that's in your room click ticks uh, every second, right? Tick, tick, tick. So that signal actually looks like this graph here it indicates sort of a ticking clock, right? So what's on the y-axis, what's on the y-axis could be a voltage output from the clock or it could just be literally a recording of the sound of the clock. Um, but the, the clock strike happens at a regular interval. Um, and a clock strike doesn't have to happen at a regular interval, but typically for, in order for a computer to work, uh, you want a clock strike that happens at a very regular interval, one every, once every billionth of a second or whatever. Um, but, uh, and, and it lasts for a certain amount of time. So what I'm indicating here with the, the green graph is a, a tick, right? Tick, 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 etc. cetera. Um, we have seen that when you build a clock, that you can actually, um, in this case, I'm showing that it's high only for just a second, and then it's low, the signal, whatever that signal is, whether that's sound or voltage or whatever, um, but that you can change the duty cycle of that clock. So you can make those ticks longer or shorter. So your typical um, clock signal might actually, uh, so this is, this is just a, one example, a different clock signal might look like this. Drawn here, a different clock signal, and this has a higher duty cycle, right? It's, it's on um, for more time. It's on for almost, in, in the way I drew it, it's sort of a 50% duty cycle, on half the time, off half the time. But regardless, what a clock signal looks like on a voltage versus time graph, let's make this a voltage versus time graph, and this is what's important um, for the, the, the synchronous logic gates, is that there are actually, notice, three parts of a clock signal. So it's, first of all, well, first of all, it's a regular, it's a, it's a, it's a regular repeating thing. Um, I'm showing the clock signal as a square wave, uh, right? The, it, it's either tick, it's on, or it's silent, it's off. Um, and it's got three parts to it. Tick, each, uh, each cycle has three parts to it. There's the, let's uh, take the last tick. There's the, what's called the rising edge. There's the actual clock signal, and then there's the falling edge. The clock signal in terms of a zero or a one, because remember, our clock signal is going to be input as a data bit uh, into the synchronous logic. Right, so here we've got the clock signal. It's just going to go in as a zero or one. There's actually, it's only, it, this, it, well, the, th the three parts are the rising edge where it's going between a zero and a one, and we indicate that rising edge as an arrow pointing upwards because it's neither zero nor one. It's going from zero to one. The signal, the clock signal itself, that's a one, and then the falling edge is an arrow going downwards. So those three parts are pertinent to the synchronous logic. 
the rising edge, the signal, and the falling edge. And you can make the synchronous logic do something on each, or detect each of those three separate parts of the clock signal. D you know, do something uh, in, I when, when it sees a rising edge, do something during the, si the clock signal on, and do something with the falling edge, and then clock signal off, of course. Um, I guess we also have signal off. Uh, maybe there's four parts, zero, um, and that's there, right? So, uh, uh, an exploded view of a single clock pulse, and uh, so that single clock pulse, again, has a rising edge, um, an on, a time when it's on, a falling edge, and a time when it's off. So each of those four pieces, I know I said three before, but a one and a zero were two pieces we already had. So each of the additional two pieces of rising ed edge and falling edge are a signal to um, a data bit, to a, a, a piece of sequential logic. And what I mean by that is possible inputs are now, instead of the possible inputs being, right, so inputs uh, to a data bit, or a flip-flop, or a SR latch, right? The inputs are, right, the possible inputs before were 0 and 1, but now the possible inputs are 0, 1, rising edge, and falling edge. Um, so all of those are inputs to our data bit. And uh, all of those have a, you, you can uh, trigger the data bit to do something on each of those uh, signals. This is a picture of a most basic, the most basic data bit, which is, the, again, the D flip-flop. The D flip-flop, D stands for base, uh, sorry, D does not stand for basic. D stands for data. It's the most basic uh, data bit. Uh, we could have an, we, uh, actually, a, a data bit often has a set and a reset as well. Um, but the D is the input of data that we want to show up on the output. Um, that's the, the, so the basic thing is, is that we put information in on the D and it comes on the output, but it only comes on the output when the clock tells it to. So we're passing information from the input to the output um, only when the clock tells it to. What I mean, so how this is sequential logic, right? How is this sequential logic? The output remains what the output was before, no matter what's on the input, until the clock strikes. When the clock strikes, it's going to send the input to the output. Um, and when I say the clock strikes, you've you got to decide at what part of the clock strike, on the rising edge, while the clock is one, or on the falling edge. And the data bit works on the rising edge of the clock. So again, the output is going to remain what the output was. You can only change the output by putting something in on the input, but the output will only change to what the input is when on the rising edge of a clock strike. So if you try to understand that, you can draw a truth table for this data bit. So, the, so, so this, again, this is a D flip-flop or a data bit. And the truth table is going to now have um, D as an input, the clock as an input, and Q as an output. And we don't care about the inverted output, we just know it's the opposite of the input. So <clears throat> the clock can be a zero, a one, a rising edge, a rising edge, or a falling edge. Let me actually do falling edge first. Ah, sorry, hold on. Clock can be a zero, a one, a rising edge, or falling edge. That's an input. And then the D can be a zero, a one. So what I've left off here is I, I guess, um, a second to make this, um, this table. So D can be zero, one, and clock can be zero, one, rising edge or falling edge. And so now what does the output do? Remember I said that the D bit is clocked so that it'll only do something on a rising edge. So that means that if there's not a rising edge in the clock, then the output is just going to be what it was before, QN minus one. Okay. Um, and so again, the output is not going to change. The output is not going to change until you get a rising edge. And then when you get a rising edge, the output is going to change to be what the data bit, what D bit, what the D input says. So again, uh, so now you change the D input, but nothing's going to change in the output. Nothing's going to change in the output. Nothing's going to change in the output until you get a rising edge. Oops, I switched place of rising edge and falling edge here. That's okay. It doesn't matter. Make sure you're paying attention. Um, 
Oh, sorry, that was wrong. Undo. Okay, rising edge is when it will change. <clears throat> rising edge is when it will change to whatever D is, and then falling edge. Okay. So I think I've said that enough times, um, that uh, you put something in on D, it's just going to, Q is going to remain what it was before until a rising edge of a clock pulse is seen, and then it'll change Q to be whatever D is. So there you go. That's your D flip-flopper data bit. Basic, sequential, basic timed um, memory chip. Single bit memory bit, memory chip. Lab, you're going to hook up um, a, uh, a, a D bit, a flip-flop, a D flip-flop, um, and you're going to hook up uh, just a, a logic pulser, a, 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 a zero or one, something that you can change to be a zero or one on the input. And on the clock, you're just going to put um, your SPDP, SPDT switch, single pull, double throw switch. Um, you're going to put that in on the clock in order to simulate a clock pulse, right? So your clock pulse is going to be simulated by turning on your switch or turning off your switch. So then you can regulate when you get the rising edge, right? So that way you can tell when you get the rising edge. That's when you turn on the switch, turn on the five volts, right? So you're going to feed your signal from your switch, from your debounced switch into the clock. And so by, push it, by pushing the button or turning on the switch from zero volts to five volts, you've got a rising edge and you can control what goes from the D bit to the, uh, sorry, from, from the D input to the Q output. Um, so it, it's a pretty simple circuit you're going to build um, and uh, see, make sure you understand how the D, the D flip-flop works.